Hey everyone, welcome back to the Crypto ZX channel. You guys know what time it is. We're going to be talking about XRP. So if you're interested in Ripple, XRP, or XRP Ledger content, you guys know what to do. Smash that like button and hit that red subscribe button. And of course, you will continue to see these updates. But anyhow, guys, you know, happy Saturday. And again, you know, obviously it is, um, you know, really late here in North America. I'm obviously located in here in North America, if you did not know. Um, and um, yeah, we're at the end of the month. It's insane. It just feels like yesterday that the month of August started, let alone the year of 2024. And we're more, th more than halfway through the year. Just let me know if you guys agree that, you know, time is going by so fast and it's just insane and honestly scary uh, to even think about. But about eight hours ago, I asked you, the community members, will the month of September be boring? So far, almost 600 votes have come in. Of course, you know, a lot of people are thinking that, yes, you know, we are going to see boring momentum for the month of September. And some are saying, no, you know, we're not going to see boring momentum. And lastly, some think, I don't care, can Bitcoin just pump already? And come on, guys, let's think about it. You know, Bitcoin has been quite stagnant over the course of the last three to four months. But, you know, welcome to the crypto space. You know, it's the uh, market where you really go through almost everything. And um, if this is your first time coming on to, uh, you know, the channel, of course, if this is your first time, most importantly, coming to the crypto uh, markets, you guys are in for a long ride. And especially if you've been here, from the beginning of 2024 and uh, what you saw compared to what you're seeing right now this is very normal but uh you know as we know it is um you know part of the game you know manipulation does occur nothing goes up straight forever we do need to know the next few months are going to be very important not just for xrp but for the entire market so looking across the board right now you are seeing quite a bit of green across the board but at the same time you know some red uh speaking about red you know just minor red across the board but uh, today is very important date reason as to why i'm saying this is because of the fact that you know the monthly close and it's really really important for the price of bitcoin to do the monthly close above the psychological resistance which of course we've been speaking about on a day-to-day -day basis i highlight that for you guys uh, a little later in this update but um, before we get into it um, any further as always just a quick disclaimer anything on this channel is not financial advice always do your own due diligence and research when you are investing in crypto so i wanted to go over this with you guys um, and this is from a team ripple how local banks can win the race to support small business payments so targeting these small businesses so let's uh, take a look at this very very interesting um, you know article kind of makes you look at xrp a ledger um, and of course you know xrp from a total different standpoint uh, and of course you know ripple as a brand so small and medium-sized enterprises which are known as smes are increasingly looking to global market to feel their growth according to mastercard's 2023 borderless payment report 50% are now conducting more international business than they did in 2021, contributing to over $17 trillion in annual cross-border payments. And $17 trillion is not a small amount by any means, guys. Despite this, momentum growth remains capped due to the constraints of slow, cumbersome, and expensive global payment processing and outdated financial services. A more streamlined modern payment stack that affords greater payment options could be the solution, benefiting SMEs and their international supply chains that have increasingly come to rely on them. And of course, you know, this is huge, a huge, huge important factor, uh, you know, in terms of supply chain. A new report from Ripple, Big Opportunity in Small Business Payments, highlights an enormous business opportunity for local banks to offer an improved payment method. With blockchain-powered global payment solutions, these financial institutions can improve agility and outmaneuver larger incumbents to capture this undeserved white-hot market and turbocharge business revenue. And now you guys are probably wondering, where does this 
really come into play. On average, cross-border payment settlement time is to three to five business days, which can strain vendor and supplier relationships and disrupt cash flow management, frustrating customers and ultimately leading to lost revenue. This is compounded by a long menu of international payment fees that are tacked on after a payment is made and can bring the additional cost to around two to three percent of the transactions. So usually, you know, if you're making cross-border payments right now and let's say Let's just say I'm going to give you guys an example and from a business standpoint, right? You guys are probably only looking at the price of XRP, you know, forget about that, you know, focus on what this is really doing, you know, the bigger picture you talk about. And I don't talk, I'm not talking about you specifically, but you know, if you are in this crypto space, and if you've been in the space for um, you know years and years, one thing that a lot of people are talking about is real world use case, real world use case. And you know Ripple is one of the uh, you know companies that are actually bringing a blockchain to the real world. And not a lot of people understand that. Of course, people focus on the native tokens price. Forget about you know what the Ripple is actually trying to do. How they're trying to uh, you know take over uh, you know the. Uh, payments payment se settlement system like the current one is outdated as we know and let's say you are a business owner and you make a deal overseas and you have to send the money uh, you know to whichever individual um, it is obviously for the deal to happen but you can't do it because you know um, the current system takes about three to five business days for processing and they need the money right off the bat there you lose your deal um, and yeah that's the biggest you know one of the biggest drawbacks and on top of that I'm sure you know you know about this that the fees on top of just sending number one it's already so slow and on top of that you know the amount of money that you're actually paying on top is just hurting your revenue and again some businesses uh, want to keep costs low right um, they don't they can't afford maybe a two to three percent uh, more um, transaction fee on such a large amount they just maybe can't afford it. and this is where um, you know ripple comes into play all right and this is where i think rlusd um, of course you know some feedback from some of these uh, companies or entities that actually have tested ripple in the past uh, you know there's obviously some feedback coming that you know ripple is quite volatile and again that's a very valid argument to be making and then this is where the stable coin itself comes into play you look at what's happening with bricks you know bricks is you know um, launching their own stable coin of course right now speculation going on whether or not it's going to be launched on ripple whether they're going to uh, look into rl usd those are just you know conversations that are happening um, you know in just out there right now in this in the space but in terms of like obviously confirmation we haven't heard that but you can really see how the landscape is shifting um, and of course speculation from the, that speculation standpoint as I've said from the beginning this of course is where the speculation portion comes in for the native token for the ledger itself where all the fun happens this is where uh, you know the uh, speculation part comes into play and of course uh, some of these entities as I've said actually need to hold XRP in order to um, you know obviously for liquidity purposes for actually um, you know do these uh, big payments of course uh, people are going to come out and say you know most of them are going to only use RLUSD uh, but you know you know who knows maybe some of them are going to use XRP the native token itself and that is something that obviously as time goes by we're going to uh, really uh, understand but uh, of course in terms of like the landscape of the you know ripple um, you know the lawsuit investor confidence into the native token itself it's still not there but what a lot of people tend to forget is despite that fact you know people might think you know XRP is a stable coin um, and you, I'm sure you guys know that uh, you know this is something that a lot of people discuss but despite that fact it's still ranked in the top seventh in terms of market valuation after such a long um, you know long long lengthy um, you know lawsuit that has been going on and still there is a chance of appeal of course we know about that and still going on and still despite that factor it still remains in the top seven spot and you do want to think about it from that standpoint as well but you know very interesting but let's continue uh, traditional payment methods also lack transparency and this is where blockchain comes into play right as businesses relying on large banks or their payment processor are often left in the dark on the status of their transactions especially after hours during weekends and holidays just what i pointed out this uncertainty only adds to the already burdensome management of global payments by smes with limited resources it's estimated that nearly one-third of smes are negatively impacted by compliance demands managing capital flows and juggling multiple currencies through the payment uh, you know through the payments 
and uh, the opportunity for local banks. If this creates an opening for local banks to integrate alternative payment methods with trusted compliant solutions within their existing infrastructure to offer SMEs faster, more reliable payment, um, I'm sorry, more reliable payments that are grounded into affordability and transparency. Huge. Affordability and transparency. This is massive. Uh, those that could fuel the almost uh, biblical uh, migration away from the large financial institutions cannot serve SMEs cross-border payment needs. Ripple offers uh, turnkey, real-time solution for the smaller banks looking to cap um, capitalize on global payments. By eliminating the complexities of traditional payment system, Ripple payment increases settlement speed and reduces cost benefiting both parties and the SMEs. And of course, last but not least, um, you know, they of course, you know, have, um, comp you know, it complies Ripple payment also complies with international regulatory mandates, AML. This compliance fosters trust and ensures secure, efficient global transaction and living enabling client satisfaction and retention. This result is dependable on secure payment solution that facilitates growth for both SMEs and their banking partners. And again, you know, speaking about that real world use case, we talk about it on a day to day basis. You need to look at it from this standpoint, a very, very, um, you know, thorough um, article from none other than the team Ripple really makes you look at Ripple from a completely different standpoint so, you know people focus more on price you know what is happening with the price what is the native token doing and you know tend to fail as to what they're actually trying to build and some are arguing that you know 2025 could be a big year but i think it's a little too early to kind of be thinking about that reason why you know the main focus right now is what happens in November and what happens with this lawsuit. You know, as I've said to you guys, um, you know, is this lawsuit obviously going to get settled for good? Uh, 125 million is going to be paid and it's done and over with. Of course, that itself is going to bring a little bit more interest in terms of investors for the native token. But on top of that, we know what's happening, the elections uh, that are coming up. And that is going to be the biggest decision maker for not just XRB, but for the broader market. And, you know, Ripple as a brand as well. We know the IPO conversation is taking place. But speaking about IPO, I'm not sure if it's the best time to be launching an IPO in 2025. Reason why I say that is because of the fact that, you know, if stock market does see that crash, a lot of people are waiting, you know, recession. You know, there's a lot of symptoms of recession that's actually starting to occur if you've been watching the channel over the course of the last few updates. So, you know, a lot of things to look out for. Um, so, again, 2025 is going to be a very interesting year. And um, like I said, first, what we need to focus on is on the um, shorter time horizon, which is, of course, the next few months. But let me know down below what you guys think regarding this love each and every one of you guys we'll see you tomorrow in crypto zx and peace out